What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, Facebook, subscribers and viewers? Bill Mack here with Pro Wrestling Unleashed. And once again, we're here with another Impact Wrestling wrap-up. This is for March 23rd, 2017. Uh, we're coming to you with another video, uh, giving you my opinion on the results and what happened on this past uh, week's edition of uh, impact um thanks for everyone for uh watching the video and uh and we're going to get right into it giving you my uh, opinion on today's action so we see the impact uh wrestling begins off showing what's happened over transpired over the past few weeks different storylines between um alberto el patron and him having to relinquish and the controversy over the Impact Wrestling uh, Heavyweight Championship. We've also saw uh, Cody's um, ongoing feud with Moose, um, EC3, uh, with El Patron. Uh, a lot going on to, to write a wrap up. We've seen uh, Braxton Sutter Lee, uh, leave with Alley, and uh, Laurel has just been going down this spiral uh, into a depression, I guess you would call it. Over the last few weeks, she's still in her wedding dress uh, and whatnot. So we'll see what goes on tonight and uh, give you my opinion. And let's we'll get started right into the show. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first, we have uh, the once uh, once again returning suicide taking on uh, one half of the former uh, Wolves, uh, Davy Richards. A uh, kind of a you know suicide was looking pretty good tonight. He basically controlled early. You know, on in the match, they went back and forth. Davy then. All of a sudden, took over and seemed like he was with Angelina Love since she's with him. You know, he was trying to make out with her a lot and and whatnot. I don't know what their storyline is. I guess uh, with with those two, uh, they may be married. I'm not sure, but she was out with him. Uh, and and David had a point of suicide. And he comes suicide. He ends up trying to make a comeback. David Richards ends up hitting his uh cr the creeping death, which was a pretty cool move. And 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 it uh, put suicide out. One, two, three, Angelina slides in the ring, they go to kiss, and you have the winner of the first matchup of the night, uh, Davey Richards over uh, Suicide. Then we come back from, um, we see that um, they show the city scene, they show the, the traffic and everything, overhead view of it, and then they home in on uh, LAX, and they show them all sitting around a table and playing cards and drinking, and Conan was telling them about how, kind of indirectly, that two uh two guys came in uh across the border into tijuana where his wrestling promotion was and if you remember dating back to it was uh a few weeks ago that uh matt and jeff were in their expedition of gold and remember they went into uh conan's uh uh wrestling promotion that he had now he says look i haven't forgotten that they can't just think they can go in there and take our belts now we're going to come here and ain't nobody can tell us what to do and we're going to get their goal so we see that uh lax is kind of making its claim uh and stake in uh in the uh impact wrestling uh tag team um titles and uh the title shot in which they're one of four teams that that's involved in this matchup um so very interesting to see in that because as i said you know the titles are vacant and bruce pritchard said in a couple of weeks which will be next week um there will be a tournament uh for those titles and uh they're vacant so whoever wins in the tournament will become your new impact wrestling uh tag team champions um we go back to break and like and we come back and like we said we see uh mckenzie very beautiful We're trying to interview laurel and laurel just starts talking about the baby and talks about her kids' names, and then she said, well, sure, and then she's like, we don't have any. She was thinking of this future that was ruined. She was mad at everybody, and then we see Sienna come to the side, and Sienna tells her, look, you got to get a grip. You know, you need to realize that Maria was trying to help. I'm trying to help. Braxton's the one to blame. Allie's the one to blame, and I'm going to have a surprise and, and uh, in store for Braxton and Allie. So we've seen this storyline going on. Uh, when Laurel, she's basically just been, like I said, last week, you know, she was out there outside the, um, in the, with the, uh, with the fans and she had her wedding dress on and she just, she's kind of losing it folks. I mean, sometimes whenever you get left at the altar and things don't work out your way, some people have that tendency to lose it. So, uh, we see that storyline going to spiral, uh, that she's going down a continual spiral. Sienna's trying to make sure she understands that she's on her side. 
Sienna's on Laurel's side. Maria was on Laurel's side. That it wasn't Maria's fault whatsoever that this happened like it did. So uh, we'll continue on seeing what happens there. Um, next up, we have a situation where it's a six-man tag. Um, we have Shira. Uh, at, you know, it's good to see Shira again. He was take, he joined last week's debut uh, tag team of uh, the Laredo Kid and Garza Jr. Uh, those three took on another uh, th uh, three-man tag uh, team, which were very new to T, uh, very new to Impact Wrestling, very new to a six-sided ring, and probably part of that exchange of talent that that uh, Impact Wrestling is now getting into with uh, with these different promotions and things, and now most recently announcing a, a relationship wrestling with the uh, AAA promotion. So trying to get different talent exchanges and whatnot. But these guys were new. Um, they were um, Idris Idris Abraham, uh, Fala Ball, and uh, Mar uh, Mario Bacara. Uh, so. If I didn't get those wrong, uh, get hopefully I got those pronounced right, and I didn't get them right, then I'm sorry. It's just learning these new guys and not really knowing who they are. Um, we've seen um, a, a match back and forth. We've seen basically uh, Shira, and we saw Loretto Kid and Garza Jr. kind of basically take over the match. It went a little back, back and forth a little bit, but as we saw those two dominant, ends up Shira ends up in the end after the ring basically gets cleared out. He hits the sky high on uh, – Mario Mario Bacara for the win, and then uh, Shira and Garza um, Garza Jr. and Laredo Kid are in the ring and are doing this little dance, whatever you call it, this little dance that they were doing. So we see that. So um, we look out the outside. We see this limousine pulling up. We know, and we see that uh, JB said he's got word that somebody's here. She, in parentheses, is here. So that lays a big mystery of the rest of the night, who she really is. Um, we see that basically uh, we come back and it shows that the uh, drive, the limo driver's blocking the camera and that he's uh, basically shaking his head. You know, basically the camera's not going to reveal who it is until they're ready to show this person uh, and, you know, coming out to the ring. So they're not going to spoil who it is. So it kind of leaves you wondering, well, who is this coming uh, to, to impact in uh, wrestling? and uh, Who's 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 coming in? So very, it's kind of a a thing to see. So uh, as we get ready to move on, folks, uh, we'll take a uh, minor break and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be right back. So just hold tight and moving right along. Um, we see that there is a a, champ, a grand championship match between Impact Wrestling Grand Champion Moose um, taking on. Uh, Eli Drake um, for this matchup, and we see uh, Eli Drake comes out. Um, we see, we hear that Josh says that there's a commotion going on in the back, and we see that Cody is talking to, um, he's talking to Brandy at the limousine, says, look, I'm not going to do nothing stupid. Don't worry about it. We see that Cody's got his Bullet, uh, bullet Club uh jacket on. He puts the hoodie on. We see him going inside. We see him going to inside the um impact zone we see him grab a chair we know that moose is at the grill position basically getting ready to make his entrance uh cody comes out and hits him in the back uh hits him a couple more times as he makes his way stumbles his way onto the front ramp of the entrance way uh cody ends up hitting the crossroads on um moose right in right in the middle of the ramp uh, so obviously we know that this isn't going to happen, this matchup between Eli Drake. Eli Drake starts surrounding the ring and walking around. We see the referees and stuff, about four or five of them come out there, and we see that it's, uh, you know, Cody really put him put his head pretty hard into the uh, ramp with the crossroads. So they determine that as woozy as uh, Moose is feeling, that he's in no shape or condition uh, to um, to wrestle in the uh, matchup tonight. So now we don't have a grand championship uh, matchup, and we see Cody kind of looking over him, and Brandy's coming out, and he's holding the grand championship in his hand. He's looking at it, so we see this is a few setting up. And he, you know, as you know, he challenged the moves uh, for the uh, grand championship uh, of TNA so, or Impact Wrestling. Excuse me, I'm trying to wind it down, doing pretty good with not calling that TNA name after you know so many years of them doing it. Um, <clears throat> so we go to commercial. We come back. We see LAX. 
um, taking on the DCC. And as of late, there's been issues with the DCC and LAX is standing strong and united in this matchup. And uh, like I said, and I didn't mean to skip a matchup, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, we saw that LAX basically kept everything on their side the first part of the matchup. You know, they were the heel group, the strong group, and, you know, and they were basically, you know, doing their sneaky ways of doing things and trying to keep J uh, Cowboy James Storm basically from not being able to tag in. He was kind of getting worked on a lot throughout the part of the match. We see that then it was mix-ups with Eddie Kingston outside and then and basically throughout the times when they were trying to get tags, trying to get the matchups, trying to get the heads up, issues and things going on on the outside of the matchup. Uh, we see that he ends up spraying James Storm in the face with something that he was supposed to be spraying Santana of LAX with. That doesn't go well. They end up hitting their finisher on uh, James Storm. And then one, two, three, LAX is your winners. Now we see that um, James Storm is – he and Bram and uh, Kingston are all in the middle of the ring. Storm is upset and irate that he said, look, these things are happening. You keep screwing up. You know, they've, they've been having issues for we, uh, for the past few weeks now. Um, you could kind of force, see the foreshadowing that basically James, you know, is frustrated with DCC since he came back with them. And as we see tonight, he basically um, said that he's the cowboy. He started this. And then the crowd started getting behind him, and they were cheering for him. And he ends up uh, leaving uh, Bram and Kingston in the ring. So we we see what that starts out. It's James Storm breaking away from the DCC, which he should. He's always been a good singles competitor. But if he has a tag team, like I said, his partners, he doesn't really have anymore. He doesn't have uh, Wildcat Chris Harris, and he doesn't have Bobby Roode anymore. So, you know, he's going back to being a singles competitor. And, uh, I wish him the best with that. Um, not to go back in the course in the beginning of the night before uh, the break and before the uh, Eli Drake match, we had Reno Scum taking on the Decay. This match was pretty much um, a, a back and forth thing. I kind of still sketchy about Reno Scum because, you know, one of the dudes looks just like, um, he looks like a cross between Sheamus and one of those old, cheap action figure wrestlers that you used to see in the packs when we were little. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Can wrestle pretty good. You tell her still new to the uh, to the company, but they end up getting a win over Decay. That's the thing about it. Decay is an established team. They fought the Hardys for the longest time. Crazy Steve, uh, you know, they were, they've were they been there for a while. Abyss has been there for a while, but we see what happens is at the end of you know, this match is that Rosemary ends up uh, spraying that mist and Crazy Steve. And then they pick her up and throw her over onto Abyss, who's on the outside. He ends up hitting a sick finisher where he jumps over his head and stomps down in the middle of Crazy Steve's back when he's got his arms pulled back. I mean, just awesome finisher. I had never seen that finisher before. But they get to one, two, three. So now you have Reno Scum taking wins in a tag team match, and you have LAX. So I'll bet some purposes is that next week on um, on the Impact Wrestling, you're going to see those two teams uh going at it so let's continue on going into it we see uh backstage we see bruce pritchard um basically he's talking to lashley um he's basically um uh, talking to him about his career the direction is going and things like that so that was kind of okay i mean really you know it wasn't really much of a few minutes of talking and then that was basically it so i'm not even going to get into all that but we we all know lashley's life so they go to break, come back, and it's a knockouts matchup between Rebel and ODB. Weird finish this matchup. You know, ODB's basically, um, you know, she's she's one of the fan favorites. And we see Rebel, she kept getting in, in Earl Hebner's face a lot of times. And finally, she goes to grab uh, ODB, hits her Bronco Buster on her. Then she gets up, grabs ODB's hat, and then, Earl Hammer, for some reason, takes it off her head, he ends up kissing her, and then he goes around, now like Ric Flair, like doing his little strut around him, which was weird. Then ODB ends up uh, drink. he ends up taking her, um, I guess, whatever's in she has in that can that flask, and drinks it, then she ends up turning Air, uh, Earl Hebner over and kissing him, giving him a kiss to the face, and then he's woozy. So she ends up hitting her finisher on Rebel, the one, two, three, 
and ODB is the winner. So we're ending that match. We've never seen a referee do that and act the way Earl Hedden was. I guess he's not now just being just as much as a character as he is anything else. So <clears throat> up next, um, we see a little bit more from Lashley and his interview with uh, Bruce Pritchard is what basically uh, comes up next. Uh, go in after that, skip down to the next matchup. This, folks, was a squash match. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus Jake Holmes. I mean, sure, the guy's big, but, you know, it was a squash match. It's still portraying uh, Bobby Lashley, kind of like they've done with other ones, give him a job or give him somebody, make him seem indestructible and powerful as a, as a uh, you know, as a champion. So it was a, basically this match was a total squash match. But um, Bobby Lashley ends up getting the pin, getting the win. So we go to commercial. Come back, JB, uh, Jeremy Borash is standing in the middle of the ring. And introduce who we finally reveal who the she is that was in the limo that got out the cameras couldn't see. And it ends up being Karen Jarrett. So the fans come. She comes in the ring. She's signing autographs and everything, little kids and all. She's nice. She's the good Karen. She comes in and she tells Jeremy about how to, it's glad to be back. And the fans were cheering for her. And she was glad to be back. And she has thanks to crew, the wrestlers, the fans, all that have been there for them. And she's kind of hoping that things, you know, have been really rough for her. And she was talking about uh, what makes it funny is the crowd starts a fire Josh chant and fire Josh chant. And then she starts laughing and she says, okay, we'll think about that. It'll be on the list or whatever. And then the fans start chanting. Yes. And Josh's like, what, what, what's going on here? Cause we know Josh is being a butthole, the whole, um, uh, commentary. I mean, he's trying now. He's not trying so hard, which is good, but he's still being the heel. So then, while she's trying to talk, um, we see the EC3 comes in. The EC3 says that, you know, he's, he's friends with the crew and he talks, uh, puts over the fans and the crew in the locker room. And, you know, and he said that he's talking about the talent and he's wanting to make impact great, uh, impact great. And he's talking about uh, how he's become a locker room guy, how he's one of their what their franchise guys and that they groomed him and he was welcoming and, and whatnot. And then we say, he tries to kind of say, well, I'm not doing it for your name. I'm doing it for mine. Uh, we end up seeing Josh go in, Josh run down Bruce Pritchard and Jarrett's and she ends up slapping uh, Josh and tells him to leave her family's name out. So Jer he, Josh lays in the corner, holds his face, TNA goes out. So hope you enjoyed the video. Until next week with in, Impact Wrestling uh, Wrap-Up, this is Bill Mack with Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and uh, take it easy.